When I was 10 years old, I almost died. I was in a coma from having Rye syndrome, which is linked to giving kids aspirin during a virus like the flu or chickenpox. In March of 1976, I had the flu and continued to worsen. I was given aspirin to relieve the symptoms. My parents knew something was terribly wrong. They continued to call the doctor that week. But as I complained of intense head pain, both being combative and then lethargic, my doctor was called. And upon hearing me in the background, he said, is that Jody? And my mom said, yes. And he said, I'll be right there. He came to our house, ushered us to Vanderbilt Hospital, demanding people on the elevator to get out of the way because he realized the urgency of the situation. Once I was evaluated, it was confirmed that I had Rye syndrome. The doctors told my parents that they would know in three days whether I would live or die. Since my pastor and his wife were there at that moment, they heard the urgency and desperation of the situation and they called for the deacons of our church to come to the hospital for the next three days and nights to pray for me. And then I'll tell you, for the last 40 years, I've heard of people's prayer experiences from those three days. And one of those is especially etched in my mind. On the third day of her illness, when she had been in intensive care, we went back to the room and I was so distraught, I kept going and came down here to the chapel at Vanderbilt Hospital. And I had a, almost a shouting prayer, asking God to heal my daughter. And when I stood up, I noticed the stained glass window that I hadn't noticed before. And it said, suffer the little children to come unto me. And I really was thinking I was getting the answer. But the answer was, she was going to be healed. My dad told me he actually prayed, Dear God, please heal my daughter. I give her to you. We want to keep her, but she's yours. And as he shared, when he opened his eyes and saw that stained glass window of Jesus welcoming the children, he believed that I was with Jesus no longer alive on this earth. Yet, a peace he couldn't fully describe overwhelmed him. And as he left the chapel and made his way back to the intensive care unit, a friend and a church member, Dr. Dunn, had been in the ICU and seeing my parents' anguish, they stayed there, pray, he stayed there praying as well. While my dad was praying in the chapel, Dr. Dunn saw my first movement in three days. As dad walked back into the ICU, Dr. Dunn said, Jody just moved her arm. And in the moments, the days, the weeks following, we had been healed. And I say we because there was not only healing for me, but those who prayed for me also experienced healing within themselves. My dad had gone to God on my behalf because I was not able, as well as many others in our family, church, and community had prayed for my healing. Stories have come over the years, and I've heard through those stories how others also experienced healing from God for themselves while asking for healing from me. There was actually healing within a healing. So when I was asked to preach this text many months ago for the series of Lessons in Luke, I said, I, I can't say no because I relate to this biblical story about as close to any other. So a little context about this story. Prior to this passage, we see that Jesus had healed a man possessed of demons and he lived in the country of the Gerasenes. This area was primarily inhabited by Gentiles, and the man he healed had nothing to do with the God of Israel. But Jesus healed him without regard for his beliefs or culture. 
And after this healing, the people were afraid of this type of demonstration of healing power and asked him to leave. So Jesus goes to the other side of the lake. And this is where our text picks up today in Luke 8, verses 40 through 56. On the other side of the lake, the crowds welcomed Jesus because they'd been waiting for him. And a man named Jairus, a leader of the local synagogue, came and fell at the feet of Jesus, pleading with him to come home with him. His only daughter, who was about 12 years old, was dying. As Jesus went with him, he was surrounded by crowds, and a woman in the crowd had suffered 12 years with a constant bleeding, and she could find no cure. Coming up behind Jesus, she touched the fringe of his robe, and immediately the bleeding stopped. Who touched me, Jesus said. Everyone denied it, and Peter said, Master, the whole crowd is pressing up against you. But Jesus Ask again and said, Someone deliberately touched me, for I felt the healing power go out from me. And when the woman realized she could not stay hidden, she began to tremble and fell to her knees in front of Jesus. And the whole crowd heard her explain why she had touched him and that she had been immediately healed. Daughter, he said. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. And while he was still speaking to her, a messenger arrived from the home of Jairus and a leader from the synagogue, and he told him, Your daughter is dead. There is no use troubling the teacher now. But when Jesus heard what had happened, he said to, J he said to Jairus, Don't be afraid. Just have faith, and she will be healed. And when they arrived at the house, Jesus wouldn't let anyone go in except her parents and Peter and John and James. Now the house was filled with people weeping and wailing. But he said, stop the weeping. She isn't dead. She's only asleep. But the crowd laughed at him because they all knew she had been dead. Then Jesus took her by the hand, and he said in a loud voice, My child, get up. And at that moment, her life returned, and she immediately stood up. Then Jesus told them to give her something to eat. Her parents were overwhelmed. But Jesus insisted that they not tell anyone what had happened. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, as I look at the context of this lesson in Luke 8, I keep seeing this reality that no matter our privilege or our shame, every person matters. No one is more important than another. Now, I have had the privilege of being taught about Jesus. And I've learned that Jesus is who I can trust to seek for healing. This little girl in the story was not physically able to come to Jesus, so her father sought Jesus on her behalf. A father filled with grief for his little girl who was at the point of death. A loving father who ran to Jesus and fell at his feet and begged him to come to his house to heal his daughter, just like my own father did for me. Jesus was walking through the crowd, and the woman who came to him had been bleeding for 12 years. So even though she was sick and had used all her resources to be cured, she came to Jesus but not wanting to be noticed or embarrassed or shamed even more than she already felt. She believed if she could just touch his robe, she would be healed. 
She, she made her way to him just to touch the hem of his garment, and he felt the healing energy leave him. And he stopped, and he asked, not once, but twice, who touched him? And she fell at his feet, confessing her need for healing, and that she had immediately been, been healed. Jesus called her daughter. Jesus said her faith had healed her and to go in peace. Now we see two daughters in need of Jesus healing. And faith changes their situation. One had faith of her father. The other had faith because it was all she had left. Jesus cared for both, no matter their faith or their status. Whether we have or do not have, we all face our own mortality. Some people have come on our behalf and seek healing for us. Some are left coming on their own without support to seek healing. Jesus cares about all people, no matter our status, our gender, our sexual orientation, our culture, the color of our skin, or the amount of money we have. My experience of healing as a little girl was formative for me and my understanding of prayer. And so I've been inspired to pray even more for the healing of others since that young age. But as we all know, healing doesn't and hasn't always come in the way that we want or imagine. Sometimes it takes years. Sometimes we may never see it, and sometimes we never know. But I can tell you this. I absolutely know that when we pray, something changes because we are seeking the intervention of God. We are expressing, expressing compassion for another, and when we do that, the very atmosphere changes in this world. We may or may not see it or know the result, but something beyond us is happening. Here's how I know one example. I prayed fervently for my mom to be healed 15 years ago from the autoimmune disease called scleroderma. But she only worsened, and her life ended far too early when I was 40 years old, and she was 65. But before she died, she went from a sense of despair to a sense of hope and joy, ready for eternal life after death. She was still very sad that she would not see her precious grandkids grow up and experience life with all her family and friends. But she accepted her reality with a deep sense of peace that passes all understanding. That is how prayer brought her healing. Healing came differently for my mom than I wanted. And over the years, healing came also for me in the midst of that great loss. Certainly it took time and people even going to Jesus on my behalf and me seeking Jesus much in the way the once bleeding woman did at times with shame and staying hidden, but healing came. And in these times we can hear what Jesus tells us all. Do not fear, only believe, and your faith will make you well, daughter or son, go in peace. Every person has value and every sadness needs lament. My therapist told me one time when I was in tears talking about the loss of my mom, and I did what many of us do when we cry in front of someone, we apologize. And she said, oh, Jody, no need to apologize. Let your tears remind you that you matter. Let your tears remind you that you matter. We need to lament and grieve our losses because it reminds us those things matter to us and that we matter. And as the scripture reminds us, we all matter to Jesus. Jesus shows us in this story that every person deserves being seen and listened to and honored and healed in some way or another. So, in this very moment, I invite you 
just to take a deep breath. Maybe close your eyes and contemplate these questions from this story in the Gospel of Luke. How are you aware that you need healing today? and share that with God. Is there someone you know that for whatever reason is not able to seek Jesus for healing? Can you go on their behalf? Can you pray and trust that God will intervene? Or maybe you're listening now and you feel you've done all the right things. Ask yourself if you're expecting Jesus to heal you or someone in a particular way. And release that expectation to God. What prayers can you bring to this community of faith? How can you join with others more so for prayer? Now I want to invite you to simply extend your hand now as if reaching out to Jesus as I close in prayer, praying an adaptation of a prayer from Black Liturgies based on this scripture. God of the once bleeding woman, thank you for wanting more for us than a life in hiding or a life without healing. On your way to heal one's daughter, you stop to listen to the story of another's hidden suffering so that she would know her healing was worthy to be witnessed. God, help us to come to you for our own healing for those we are aware who, who are suffering, and for those in our communities who have become accustomed to going unnoticed. Keep us from becoming so preoccupied with the demands of the powerful that we let quiet stories go untold. And Lord, let those expecting to be centered in your presence have their expectations dismantled so that we learn that just because you stop to bear witness to the tragedies of others, it doesn't mean you desire healing for anyone else any less. And for those who bleed, who have sat in the corners of pain too long, please heal. Wait for all voices whenever we are ready to share them. And hold our stories in the story of you. And now I just invite you to lower your arms and place your palms in your lap. And join me as we have inhale and exhale breath prayers. Inhale, my voice and my tears matter. And exhale, God help me to tell my story, to express my pain. And inhale, I will not be made invisible. Exhale, my presence is a healing. Inhale, I don't understand the mysteries of life and death. Exhale, God, you desire all people to know your healing and love. Inhale, do not fear. And exhale, daughters and sons, your faith has made you whole.